you know, new faces uh, wherever you are connecting from. You are highly welcome. And we hope this session will be valuable to you. And yeah, so I'm going to share my screen right now. That's where the nice sharing. Okay. So. This is Kira. Sadiq, let me know if it'd be helpful for me to just keep sharing my screen. Oh, there you go. Okay, um, this is Sadiq speaking. Um, I am the West Africa language coordinator at Art and Feminism and also um, the chair and committee member for the Media Language Service Hub. I am also uh, the executive director for the Dagbani Media and Social Group. And yeah, so I am super excited to be sharing with you some of the work that I do uh, within uh, communities in Africa, especially West Africa, and I'll be sharing more about um, our story and the challenges we face and also um, some of the things that. Uh, I think we could collaborate as a committee to help uh, address some of the challenges. And I will go back to my session. So the first thing I would like to share with you uh, is the goals for this particular session and also the work um, of us in terms of West Africa Indigenous Language Program. And as uh, many of you are already aware, um, this is one of the sessions. I, I, I assume most of you are part of the committee that I'm currently supporting in West Africa. So the goal of this uh, program is to support um, minority and indigenous, also underserved and under resourced language countries. And we do that by providing technical um, support and also uh, resources, not directly from uh, us and family, but help you, you know, access funding from the media foundation. Um, to you know implement your language initiatives. Uh, we also seek to amplify our Wikimedia language projects, especially those that are working on indigenous language uh, projects in Africa. We would like to like share your work and also help you connect with the broader community. We also uh, provide um, training by equipping communities with technical skills that they require to grow their community. And I would like to start the session. Um, so this is Sadek again. And I am going to be sharing with you some of the success stories from the committee that I work with. Um, let's start by celebrating the approval of the Dagari and Social Media Project. So um, Dagari is uh, a language from the Mabia languages and also Kusa. These are two uh, indigenous languages that are spoken in northern Ghana, and they are one of the 16 mutually intelligible languages that um, I am currently supporting as the lead for the Dagan Wikimedia and Social Group, and also in my capacity as the West African Language Coordinator at Art and Feminism. So, um, that guy uh, was approved on November 11, 2023, and if you want to access the guy Wikipedia, you can directly type dag.wikipedia.org and same for FUSAL. FUSAL was approved um, just recently uh, on March 10, 2024 and the link to access FUSAL Wikipedia is kus.wikipedia.org and if you, I'll be sharing this slide to all those who join the session if you want to learn more about the story and there's a news publication on that on CC News um, and also Joy Online, which um, is, these are uh, one of the, uh, you know, online news portals that uh, are, you know, interested in documenting a project like this. So we are very excited about their uh, support but in sharing like some of the things that we do. And if you want to learn more, you can access the link when I share this slide. So let's, after 
the celebration, we'll also be talking about um, some of the challenges as I mentioned to you earlier. Next slide. Okay, so um, we all know that there are challenges within post media language communities, even beyond the West African language uh, community. Uh, there's a general challenges that are faced by smaller minority language communities, especially within the Wikimedia ecosystem. And some of these challenges are, you know, quite pertinent and, you know, they cut across multiple language communities. And uh, as one of the uh, chairman committee member for the uh, Wikimedia language that they have, we've been working extensively on uh, research initiatives to actually one research project and we'll be uh, you know, developing another research soon. But uh, in our last uh, project, we uh, you know, connected with several uh, language communities to understand some of the barriers that they face and uh, some of the challenges that um, are you know, unique to these language communities and how we can collectively address them. And I am going to be sharing with you the most important ones that I find really um, uh, hey, Sadiq, I'm sorry. Everyone. Yeah, um, I just wanted to highlight that Anthony said that he's having a hard time hearing. I'm wondering if other people are also having a hard time hearing. I can hear okay, but I'm wondering if it's if other people are also able to hear Sadiq. Can everyone hear me? Anthony, it might be on your end. Um. He's saying it's uh, Paul says it's not very clear. Um, are you using your headphones, Sadiq? Or are you would it be land on here? Yeah, so I'm currently using my headset, I can disconnect and try. Uh, maybe. Yeah, Dan is also saying it's not loud enough, so maybe, yeah, this is our going to our access practices, y'all. We're pausing for access, <laughs> making sure that uh, everybody can hear okay. So maybe, yeah, take off the headphones. Does this work? Can you hear me now? For me, that sounds louder. Um, how about for other people? Keep talking, Sadiq. Okay, okay, okay. So it seems to be better now. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, um, great. So Thanks, here. everyone. Yeah, so I'll start by sharing some of the challenges we discovered during the research. And um, the most important challenges we, uh, we want to share with you today is uh, those that are listed here. Um, there were several challenges, uh, challenges like uh, financial challenges, you know, uh, uh, volunteerism, faith, uh, so many people shared different and interesting challenges that they say that are sometimes not, um, you know, considered like a challenge in other parts of the community, but really a big challenge for some communities in uh, Africa. For example, um, challenges with access to uh, quality internet service and also, um, you know, proper, um, you know, access to, you know, uh, laptops and, you know, computers or smartphones to be able to contribute to that. These are some of the challenges that uh, are not, you know, quite, uh, you know, unique in some cases, but uh, very uh, rampant in other parts of the community, like the African community, especially West Africa. So um, the challenges were, one, uh, lack of technical skills to launch and uh, maintain a new language media project. So this, I think, uh, has been like one of the biggest challenges we face as a community, uh, especially those who are working on language uh, projects or lang smaller language media projects. Um, there's no um, proper documentation of um, the incubator resources, which is really very difficult for people, especially new entries. And also the interface of the Wikimedia incubator seems to be, uh, you know, not user-friendly. It doesn't really help people, especially those who are completely new to Wikipedia. If you are joining Wikipedia uh, for the first time, it is probably going to be very difficult for you. So these are some of the challenges that are related to technical barriers that we discovered during the research. And the challenges with volunteer recruitment and retention, uh, a lot of people struggle to recruit volunteers they are countries because uh, most of these volunteers are either students or 
um, you know, individuals who have, you know, other things to worry about, like uh, lack of jobs and, you know, uh, time constraints, and, you know, many other social um, challenges that directly affect them and reduces their interest in contributing to the studio. And then the third one was um, inadequate skills in multimedia, grant writing and reporting. So both of them have struggled to access uh, grants to work on language specific projects and uh, we do understand the need for us to like uh, empower them and also help them craft good proposals to access uh, grants from multimedia and foundation. And then um, there was also uh, challenges related to AI and machine translation for smaller languages. Yeah, yes, we have a content translator for some uh, African languages or multimedia projects, but uh, for new languages, uh, it's currently um, not automatically available. And it, it takes a while for you to have such features to be able to translate directly on multimedia pages uh, on Wikipedia. So uh, AI and machine translation challenge for smaller language projects. And then the technical challenges as I highlighted with the incubator is still one of the outstanding challenges that we need to uh, talk about. And I don't want to be sharing all of this by myself. I know all of this uh, in one way or the other. You know, you have experience in some areas that uh, may be very useful to this conversation. So I would like to open this. To all of you, um, please feel free to unmute and let us know where you are joining from and uh, able to share with us either the challenges that you face currently in your community or um, the challenges that you see um, in the future based on some of the uh, challenges that I highlighted and other challenges that may not be captured in my presentation. And so this is an opportunity for you to speak. I want this to be more uh, interactive rather than a regular presentation. So please, uh, I welcome your ideas. I welcome your, um, you know, uh, comments and, you know, feedback and any other thing that you'd like to share with us. Um, I'm also not calling on only um, people like working on language projects on this media. There are also participants and the time who may be working on specific projects that are not currently related to this media. So please feel free to share that your, Project challenges you face within your community and also um, in the future, what challenges you foresee. Um, yeah, so over to all of you. Thank you for sharing that. I can also share in the chat. Um, Sadiq, are you, are you, Sadiq, are you asking us to um, speak up and share online? Yep. So I'd be happy to, and I'm uh, very pleased that you invited me to join. For those of you who um, I haven't met, for most of you, I'm leading a project currently. I am actually leading a couple of projects one of which Sadiq is participating in. And our focus is primarily professional development of teachers. And the specific area that we're focusing on is the use of digital educational materials and more specifically, digital educational materials that are openly licensed or 
Open Educational Resources, OER. And in order to do that, and then even another more specific area is in those areas where internet is not available. So we're promoting the use of a um, inexpensive tool uh, called a Moodle box. And it's a, um, a way to present content to students or anyone for that matter in areas where internet is not available. And then further, we are working on developing an expansion of that tool that includes AI for the purpose of translating content into local languages. Now we have already started with um, Peter Amuabil in Tamale, Ghana, working on translating content into Dagbani. And we've also done some work in South Africa with teachers translating content into uh, Isihosa at the kindergarten level. And so we welcome anyone who wants to to participate in our work and we can talk further about that. Thank you so much for sharing. I see uh, in the chat. Um, so there are a question for a link. I saw that you shared the link earlier. I don't know if it's the same link. There are a question for, yeah, I can send that part. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's one of the projects that I'm really excited about because uh, I see we all know the challenges that are related to internet connectivity in Ghana and some part of West Africa. So this is really a very useful resource and an initiative that would give um, you know, teachers the power to be able to you know, support students to learn uh, even without the need for internet access. So yeah, this is really uh, an initiative that um, really would uh, help and go a long way to um, you know, impact communities in Ghana. I know Peter has been doing a lot in his um, school. Um, yeah, so I see, please feel free to unmute Sobo. Yeah, hello. Hello, Sadiq and all. I am Subodh from uh, India. Uh, you know that CIS A2K uh, is working as partner organization of Wikimedia Foundation in India. And we are working with several uh, communities in India, uh, language communities. Uh, the, the, uh, you know that the uh, Indian situation is much uh, similar to yours. Uh, there are so many languages uh, across India. And uh, some of them, many of them are not scheduled languages. So the state has not recognized it. Uh, many languages don't have any script uh, or any written uh, literature as well, but uh, millions of people speak that language. Uh, so it's very peculiar uh, situation in India and in, in the era of this internet and digital world, uh, all these languages are uh, facing many issues because uh, the languages are not digitized yet and so the literature is not there on internet uh, they are finding it very difficult to find the citations as well uh, when uh, they are writing about their language or their topics on the uh, other language wikipedias english or any uh, indian language wikipedia so and the other peculiar problem i don't know whether you have faced it uh, we have uh, for example there is one language konkani uh, which is written in multiple scripts. So um, people uh, are writing that language in at least four to five scripts. The same is the situation with many languages. So there is a conflict among the competition, conflict among the communities also, which script is to be used. So, so in which script Wikipedia should be there. So uh, starting from that question, uh, some people the majority people or influential people start uh, wiki uh, in some language some script but the other minority uh, uh, communities or group of uh, language people they feel that they are uh, like kept aside and they are, they are not then participating in the development of that wikipedia 
so the script problem is there script issue is there so uh, have you faced this challenge in your area and uh, how you resolved it thank you thank you so much for sharing um yeah this is really a, a challenge that we have also faced but i've also heard about uh, challenges that are related to scripts where um, a particular language um, struggles to determine which uh, script will be useful for them but in our context i think the challenge has to do with uh, uh, you know compatibility with uh, electronic gadgets like uh, keyboard support for these uh, scripts like uh, the latin and um, we use the latin script and some of the characters like for the band are not readily available and you have to like combine several um, like three two to three and different characters to get one special character so that's like a challenge for some of the countries but i think yours um, is a little bit um, different like so how did the community like do they have, have like open competition to decide which um, script is useful for them and what is the real challenge regarding um, the choice of the script do they have any like future um like do they feel uh, something about what the script will look like in future or maybe at a point they may have to like reverse the script back to another language so i just wanted to be sure if like there's a dialogue on this topic within the community in deciding which script is useful for them and then um, I would also like to know how many um, of these 14 languages, that's really a, a lot of uh, work and I, I I can imagine how it is like working with multiple language communities. Um, do they all have like incubator, do we have some of them that are currently live or like are you testing them one after the other or some of them? I just want to understand how many of them are published already, how many are in the incubator, and how many languages you plan to incubate. Yeah, all these languages now, the 12 plus languages, 14 languages have the Wikipedias now, uh, but there are challenges with the machine translation still and AI also. So the development of AI in Indian languages uh, is uh, taking up now. Government has taken many positive steps like uh, projects like Bhashini and other other projects. Uh, but uh, uh, the community has to decide whether uh, they will allow the use of machine translated content and then curating it uh, because yeah, there are many uh, dis debates and discussions among the communities and many communities, most of them have uh, stopped using the machine translated uh, content because a uh, lot of uh, then junk is there and somebody has to curate it later. So uh, many, many communities are, most of the communities are not allowing uh, the machine uh, translated content. Uh, uh, then uh, the few Wikipedias which have uh, taken up in the last few years, they uh, they, they were uh, shifted from incubator to main, uh, but they are struggling with the uh, uh, new editors because very few editors are there and the growth of the uh, those Wikipedias is also slow uh, because of the retention and other issues. Uh, but but I think the communities will overcome it in the course of time because uh, we are also supporting uh, the underrepresented languages uh, uh, communities uh, like Santali, Tulu and uh, many other languages are there. But many uh, languages want to uh, also start the uh, Wikipedia on their own. Uh, so some incubator uh, are in waiting, uh, but the... Uh, the script issue uh, that is to be solved, uh, then uh, the language Carpora uh, is to be digitized and put somewhere like in Wiktionary or Wikidata, uh, Wikidata like Zims, etc. So I think uh, 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 I have developed one uh, process also for this. Uh, I will paste that link, find out and paste that link in the chat. Uh, how to approach uh, all these underrepresented language communities. So what will be the steps uh, uh, to 
uh, for example, first to digitize the uh, word corpora from that language, then uh, 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 documenting that language in audio form as well. Because when we uh, read the language, how to pronounce the la language. So uh, we can uh, record the, all the audios in lingua libre uh, very uh, nicely. Uh, so that can be next step. Then uh, slowly we can build the lexemes and other things so that uh, the language is connected with uh, English and then with other languages uh, via English. English as a hub we can use. Uh, so I think uh, these three, four steps we can, if we can complete the systematically for, uh, if we can uh, uh, develop some collective around uh, three to four languages, piloting these, uh, processes with uh, three to four languages and then uh, scaling up uh, those processes. I think uh, such kind of collective approach is needed in the Wikimedia moment. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. And please feel free to share the link. Um, and I see a lot of like connection. I see that uh, uh, you have like a lot of things that are uh, so many things happening within your community spoke about let's use which is uh, an exciting um, project that I'll be talking about tomorrow and we also spoke about uh, lingua libre uh, like uh, recording audio files I think these are just one of the uh, some of the like uh, um, ways that we can use to like uh, integrate our language especially with Wikidata and um, when you are creating more lessons in your language uh, the fact that um, there's um, uh, existing um, content in the bigger languages like English, yeah, you can easily connect um, your language by adding lexemes, and connecting them to several um, other languages, which makes it more um, integrated on Wikidata. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we um, haven't used um, Lingua Libre yet, but we used uh, a similar um, tool like that called um, Spell for Wiki uh, in the Japan community, especially for the Japan language. Um, and what we did was um, uploading you know, audio pronunciations of you know, the Bani dictionary words um, directly from the cloud for the app to Wikimedia Commons. Uh, I understand the application is not yet um, available in iOS, only in, uh, it's available on Android at the moment. And I think it's also developed by some community members in India. I'm sure you, you know about this, uh, you know, tool that is quite similar to the lingua libre and i think lingua libre has other special features that self uh, um, wiki may not have but i think they are quite um, similar to each other they work almost the same way and they are very useful for smaller language projects like um, like ours and the language that you mentioned and in terms of the incubator uh, i'm not sure um you know how uh, challenging it is for you, but for us, as I mentioned in my earlier presentation, um, we have a lot of challenges, uh, especially when it comes to you know the interface. It, it doesn't look really friendly. Uh, it looks quite difficult, and even adding uh, basic things like references and citing access in the incubator is very difficult because you need to like um, rely on templates, several templates like that. Yeah, so um, it's something that we can learn from you. How have you uh, navigated around these challenges and some of the things that you can share with us? I would like to also add that um, you are also welcome to share um, you know, some of the future challenges you see either in the incubator or maybe small language um, projects. Even with Translate, um, there's also like a lot of discussions around Translate, how uh, uh, it should be, you know, uh, improved to make translation very um, easier for the smaller languages and stuff like that. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, we really appreciate your, um, you know, comments on uh, how, you know, we can support smaller languages using the things and data powered tools like that. So yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, is there anyone who would like to share with us some of the challenges they see right now in their community and also the challenges they see in the future? Okay. 
Okay, so I would like to move to the next slide. Okay, so based on these challenges that I highlighted, I have decided to put up these uh, simple um, proposed steps. This may not be uh, useful to other companies, but based on the challenges that I discovered within the uh, African language communities, uh, especially the West African language Wikipedia communities, I see that uh, these three steps could help them you know, address some of the challenges. So I personally think we should empower minorities and indigenous language communities and individuals to do this communities to actively engage and thrive within the media within the media ecosystem. Uh, I am saying this because uh, people feel uh, they are less supported. A lot of people do not get enough support, especially with regards to funding to embark on uh, language projects. So I feel like the foundation or uh, other committees like the language steering committee or the language diversity have uh, you know empower um, smaller language committees and also leaders who are working on smaller language projects and i would also uh, share that this is one of the uh, areas that the media language diversity has been working on in, in our next um, round of projects uh, and also the current um, grant application that has been proposed on behalf of the hub i think speaks to address some of these challenges there's going to be the need for us to connect with several uh, African language countries and also Asia and uh, special languages that are connected um, with us during the research project. So, um, yeah, it's something that is coming up from the language diversity. And then uh, I also see the need to address the unique challenges. Uh, we know that there are several challenges that we cannot like, count all of them, but there are really challenges that are quite unique among all these uh, languages um, that I am currently connected to and also beyond the language that I'm working with. So how do we address these um, challenges that are you know, unique to all these communities? As I mentioned, what can we put together to support them in terms of capacity and also resources? So this is something that I think if we try to have open conversations um, with communities will be able to um, address the challenges. So it is important for us to get to the communities, engage them, and you know, see how best we can collaborate with them to help them navigate around the challenges. And then um, we also need to guide new language communities um, during their integration stage and even after they are recognized. I see that uh, most of the times when language projects comes out of the integrator, uh, a lot of people lose the uh, interest in contributing to, which is sometimes surprising because the integrator, as I mentioned, is quite complex and to, to, to work in. And once they get published, they rather, um, you know, lose interest. I don't know what exactly the challenge is, but what I do understand is that some of these promises, after it is published, they feel like, oh, okay, my language is now live on Wikipedia. I have my subdomain. They just feel like relaxed, and um, and most of the times I say that uh, when your language is published, that's even the beginning of the work. So the incubator, when the end of everything in the incubator, nobody sees it. It's just you and your community and anyone who try to like find out what the community works on. But once your language is published in the mainstream, uh, there's it comes with a lot of responsibility. There's a need for you to you know, continue to edit or improve the quality and quantity of articles within uh, uh, in your language and also help uh, mix the interface, like develop um, uh, the set of like translation, also make sure you get um, uh, technical people to support with uh, Wikidata in integration, like um, the lessons we spoke about and also the use of Wikidata powered info boxes like the uh, data box and by templates like that. So these are some of the, the things that can help improve the uh, new newly improved, uh, newly approved languages. And also even when you are in the incubator, you can still use uh, some of these tools, uh, the Wikidata powered info box. So my proposed steps are you know empowering the communities to you know by engaging them 
and also uh, address these challenges by connecting to the committees directly and then guiding the new language, not just in the institute, uh, even after they are published, there's a need for us to connect with them and then guide them to, on how they can improve the quality of access in the newly published language project. And again, I would like to um, open this story. Um, I want, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so please um, again share with us your thoughts. What solutions do you think would help these language communities based on the challenges that we share? And then um, you can also share with us exactly what you are doing in your community or some of the things that you want to do in your community that will help them um, you know, solve these challenges or address some of the challenges. So I will open the mic to anyone who wants to share with us their proposed solutions or what they think they should do to help language communities. Also feel free to share in the chat so I can you know do that thing. Okay, thank you for sharing. The major challenge is to grow the speaking community locally as well. Global and local efforts to go hand in hand to sustain this for this creating this industry to language and first children's storybooks, animations, etc. could be used promote the small language project. Thank you so much for sharing. I think this is very uh, useful. Yeah, I see Yao or Yao is to unmute and share with us. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, so my Hello, is it okay now? Hello. Okay, so challenges. Um, um, I have a lot of languages in my Irish. Yeah. And, and I think um, one of the languages that came in mind was um, Nzima, the, the language in Ghana. So I actually try to check on data where I is uh, there, but I wasn't really seeing the one who is in charge. Of, and I don't really know how this incubator stuff works. If maybe someone starts a language, you cannot uh, maybe also start or I don't know if you can be a fair idea on how this data and like if you want to start a new language, how it works and other stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing, Paul. Yes, I do have a, an answer to your question. Yes, so um, in Zima, I think there was a community that reached out uh, last year about starting an incubator in, in Zima. And I think I connected them to Amir, who has been helping us with uh, setting up incubator language. So, yes, there's an incubator. Um, project in, in Zima language, and uh, I, I would find that, I think it was uh, Jemima who is working with some team of volunteers on that, I would 
share the link with you or I'll connect you with my manager that has, um, uh, you know, contact this um, individual who are working on traditional language. Yeah. But to answer your question, to, you know, start an incubator for you, just go to the Vida incubator and there's a, a, a page that you can, you know, create your own uh, test VC, make a request, and then uh, uh, what you need to do is to check and see if the language doesn't um, already um, exist on the incubator. So you first of all need to know the ISO code for the language. Um, in the case of the Vanus, AG, Bruni is EUR, Nijima, I have no idea. I'll have to check that maybe on Google. And yeah, so Fancy has SAT, um, C has CW. So you first of all need to look out for the language uh, ISO code, and then you can search it on the media incubator to see if it's already uh, been tested. Uh, other than that, you can just uh, reach out to me or Amir, and I'll help you to uh, you know, set up an incubator for your language. But in Jima, I think it's not already exist, and I'm happy to connect with the community. That's okay by me. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, the above initiative is part of empowering the language communities. Communities. There are so many good initiatives in India regarding this, and I will share the details to you. Thank you so much. We are happy to see that. Yeah. Any more? What are your proposed solutions? Yes. Um, well, Sadiq, I will I will suggest, and as uh, Sabota had suggested, I think a good place to start is with any language, is with children's books. Start at the um, most elementary level, and especially in those instances where the script has not been determined. One way to do that would be to go to a place like either African Storybook or uh, Prathap, the, the Indian one, and download one of the books at the kindergarten level and then translate it into the script that you want to choose. Because there, then you have pictures that you can then describe with script. And you can pick whatever script you want. Uh, I think you'll probably have to choose from, you know, either the Latin or Arabic or one of the primary Indian ones, which I'm not very familiar with. But to start with, pick one of the ones, one of the scripts that is in existence, and then um, build from there. Um, that's the approach we're taking with our project: is um, you know, start with the doable that thing which we can accomplish and then become and then add on and get get more complex as we go we don't want to start creating um you know a chemistry book to begin with we'll start with a children's storybook awesome thank you so much dan and i totally agree with you we have to start from somewhere especially children's book now we will I, I'm happy that now a lot of people are getting to appreciate the use of local language in the basic education context like by developing um, specific animation tutorials and also like a language translation tools that helps children to learn um, basic um, languages in Africa. So yeah, this is really useful. And once we get materials like this, I feel like people start like, using them that can be very uh, useful to their communities as well. Uh, when it comes to publishing, but I, I strongly and would always encourage um, public, uh, like language communities, especially smaller language communities, to continue to write on the internet in their own language. Uh, they should try to record um, tutorials, whatever form of material they are working on, they should try to localize them so that uh, even with AI and machine learning, they able to integrate some of these uh, resources in our own language. And also the fact that um, there are um, new tools that are being developed like the Kaya app that uh, the, the, the 
compare the several languages, which allows to, uh, to get the non to get you know, uh, directly um, translate um, from English or other languages and or in between um, languages. There is also like options by uh, automatic speech, speech recognition. And so, yeah, these are just some of the things that there's so much to be done. And I hope that um, collectively we can help address and adding books also online or even um, publishing in local languages also gives us the power to be able to use references that are related to these languages. Most of the articles that are currently uh, books that are used on uh, local language. Their projects are mainly published in English. Something that we want to go beyond and you know have them local published in our own languages uh, so that we can you know help improve uh, you know the existence of these languages on the internet and also uh, in books. Most of the time we go to bookshops and we just like go to books that are published in local languages and the rest of them are just in English. So we want to help address. Thank you so much um, for sharing with me. Any more? We are just being very close to the end of the session. I would like to go to the next page, which is the Ghanaian language meetup. So um, last year, the committees came together as part of our effort to bring all the language committees together. We organized like a meetup in Tamale that uh, brought together several language media projects. I'm sure some of them are in this course. And we brought together the Madia language countries like Gabon, Kukuni, Mauritius, Dagai, and also uh, other languages in the southern part of Ghana, Fanti, Ghanaian, Tutu, and the Fee, Ewe, together. There were nine committees that participated in this uh, particular meetup. And this year, I'm happy to share that we we'll be like uh, share, um, hosting this, a similar event like that. And so, what is the event about it's a mini language meetup organized by the Ghanaian volunteers um, to support language projects. So the goal is to bring the languages together, connect them together, share um, our collective um, goals, you know, share what projects we can work on together and also uh, just hear from them what they are working on and how other people can learn from their projects. And then um, we also use it as an opportunity to network, like it's a networking opportunity for us to connect with several communities as we are all scattered so with, uh, in Ghana. We are not uh, like all based in the same region, some are in the northern and southern part, so it's also like a networking opportunity for us. So the first event was piloted on May 12th. Um, this, what, that was December, yeah, 14, 15, 16. I think that I got the wrong date from it. And also, um, we, this year we'll be hosting it in Tamale again. And we are hoping to onboard like, more language communities this year. Uh, so, what we are expecting this year, we want to invite more language communities. So, if you are working on the language project right now, which was not part of the event last year, we are Highly welcome to participate in this um, open conversation with multimedia communities in Ghana. And we also want to create partnership opportunities. I must say explicitly that this event is not supported by Art and Feminism. So, this is uh, an, uh, like a volunteer powered event organized in Ghana, and Art and Feminism is not part of the organization. Yeah. Um, we also want to create partnership opportunities. So if you are um, working on other projects, like want to be part of this project, this year we have uh, the likes of Rising Voice in UNESCO Ghana, especially interested in part of this project. And then we want to collaborate on grant making, capacity building, volunteer retention. These are the projects, um, the challenges that we face in our communities, and we want to use it as an opportunity to address them. We want to at least the space of the volunteer communities in Ghana, and uh, it's also an opportunity to create uh, community empowerment and also build the skills of community leaders by providing them with opportunities within the media ecosystem. Um, again, also, I know some of you are here. If you are part of last year's event, feel free to share with us. 
what you learned from the event and if you're not part of that, please tell us if you are interested in being part of it or just share with us the language you are watching. We're happy to hear from you. Thank you. You can also type it again in the chat and I will read it out. This is Kira speaking. Uh, I am also recognizing that we are about at time. So also while people might be, I mean, it's been such a rich conversation so far. So thank you everyone for sharing about your various experiences and challenges and solutions. Um, but yeah, I would also love to hear from other people if there, if you haven't had a chance to participate yet, what other languages you might be working on. It'd just be a great to get a good sense of people in the room. And then Sadiq, before people have to jump off, I also wanted to give space for, for your next slide about your presentation tomorrow, if you want to talk about that. So let me know what language are you working on? I know Dan works Zagbani at the moment. You have other languages that you are trying to work on. And uh, my friend from India also works with several languages. And he mentioned some of them. I don't think I've uh, heard some of the languages, but yeah, India has so many languages. And yeah, feel free to share with us one of the most um, active language projects you are working on in India. And then, uh, are you working on other languages outside Garbani? Yes, we're working on um, Isihosa, which is the language uh, from the people in near Cape Town. And then we've started with uh, Isiswili, uh, which is the, of course, common language in Kenya. Uh, there's Kenya has another you know, 20, 30 languages, but um, we'll start with what we can. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody want to share? What language are you working on? What has been your experience? Yeah. Any other thing you want to share with us? Okay. Okay, so this is the last part of this session. Um, there will be a learning training tomorrow on dictionary and lexicon on data that I'll be co facilitating with my colleagues from Malaysia, Taufik, and I'm very excited to share this with you and I look forward to you know having you in the session tomorrow. All right, thank you so much. Uh, are we on time, Kira? Um, yeah, we're doing great. Okay, cool. So um, this is my email, and you can also visit us and Feminism for all for more information. Um, the slides will be made available to you to learn more about the Ghanaian language and stuff. Yeah, keep fire pump in the band. Thank you. This is thank Kira. You. Yeah, thank you to Sadiq. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, hope that you have a great rest of your Friday. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.